If you're looking for a really high quality, long range thrower, this Claris XT12 GT Pro has beat all the other SFT throwers I have in my collection. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. So I started reviewing the Ace Beam L16 V2 recently, and I said it was my favorite SFT thrower because of its tint and beam shape. And it still is, so I'm not backtracking on that. However, in testing of that light against this Claris XT12 GT Pro, I found that this light, the Claris, threw further with more lumens. So, if you're looking for the ultimate SFT thrower, I think this is the light to choose because it gives you more bang for your buck and it's an excellent light. Let's jump right in and take a look at it. First off, this is the way it looks. It's got a very classic look. Got some knurling on the side there. Notice there's a couple features on it that you don't normally see. For example, you don't normally see a tripod adapter right there. That's kind of a cool thing because, I mean, you can use this as a tool. You can put it on a tripod and just aim at something to like change a tire or something like that. On the other side, opposite that tripod adapter is where the flappy doodle is. And if you peel this up, and it's a really big, thick one. Take a look at how thick that flappy doodle is. If you get it out of the way, there is a revealed, a USB-C charge port. And when you charge in it, there is an indicator light right there. You can just see it. And that indicator light will go from red blinking at the lowest to red, orange, and then green when it's finally charged. Also, when I turn the light on, let me just turn the light on really quickly here, you can see it's indicating the current state of charge where green indicates 70 to 100%, and then orange would be 30 to 70%, so forth. This light operates from a clicky tail switch, but there is also an e-switch next to it right here. Now what these switches do depends on which UI you're in at the time. So I'm in the outdoor mode, not the tactical mode, and the outdoor mode will give you a turbo, instant turbo with the click, okay? And when you're in turbo, then you can use the side button to click and go down from turbo to lower modes. If the switch is clicked off and you press and hold this guy, you're gonna get a moonlight, all right? If I press on the side switch for a second or two and let go, it's going to come off the moment I release my thumb. But if I press and hold for longer than I think three seconds, when I let go, it stays on in the moonlight. Now the side switch, every time you tap it, it goes up from the bottom. So that's good in the situations where you don't wanna blind somebody. Now to get out of these modes, just simply tap the main mechanical switch and let go. Now there's also a tactical mode, which I don't really care for. It puts dedicated strobe on the side switch. I'll show you how to get to it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for the indicator light, find it right there. That's the one that indicates the charge of the battery. Now you're gonna use the side switch and you're gonna press and hold for five seconds until this indicator light starts flashing red and green. There it goes, red and green. Now while it's doing that, you tap this and let go of the side switch. Now that you've done that, it's going to have reconfigured it and now when I press the side, it will be a strobe. I'm a big fan of strobes, so I'm gonna set it back to the outdoor mode, but there it is. Before we head outside to look at beam shots, I wanna show you this beautiful reflector and SFT40 emitter down at the bottom there. This is a gorgeous, deep, smooth reflector, which gives maximum throw. In our beam shots, we're gonna pit the Claris X-T12 GT Pro against the Olight Javelot. That's the new Olight Javelot. It's in 21700 thrower as well. It's a different emitter. It's not an SFT40, but the reason why I'm choosing this one is because that's our user request. A bunch of people asked how the Claris XT12 GT Pro stacked up against the Javelot, so let's do it. And I also wanted to show this Science Sky H5 GT, which isn't a really 
easy to find light. But the reason is it's an SFT 40 thrower as well. But notice that its reflector is so much larger than the Claris. Now that makes it a really bulky light and not directly comparable. But I just wanted to point out what a really large deep reflector like this does to the same exact emitter. So let's get to the comparisons. I'm gonna have the Claris XT12 GT Pro in my right hand and the Olite Javelot in my left hand. Let's start out on the nearby tree here. This is the Claris. Now let's go with the Olite. Okay, now let's go to the middle tree. That's the Claris. Now let's go the Olite. And now let's finally go the 150 meter palm trees in the back of the Claris. And here is the Olite Claris and the Olite. So clearly the Claris is a much more focused and intense beam than the Olight Javelot. But I do want to point out in the ground in front of me that the Olight has a spreadier beam. You can see it on the mid distance there, hopefully, that the beam has a larger hotspot for the Javelot. Size wise, I think that the Claris really could be pitted against the Ace Beam L16 V2, and I did that in the Ace Beam L16 V2 video. So if you wanna see the Claris directly against the Ace Beam, go check that video out. It's in the link right here above right now. Now we're gonna go the XT12 GT Pro versus the Cyan Sky H5 GT, which is a much bigger reflector as I said, but let's go straight to turbo and do this. Nearby tree. Nearby tree, middle tree, middle tree, wait for that car, and there's the palm tree with the Claris. There's the palm trees with the cyan sky. And you can see what a big reflector does. A big reflector really concentrates that beam. Let's take a look at how low its moonlight is, and also let's get a runtime test for about 30 seconds or so. Alrighty, so here is the moonlight. The moonlight's not really a moonlight. You can see it's about 10 lumens. And with how much candela there is, that 10 lumens is gonna look pretty bright. So just know that there's not really moonlight. If I was saying that, that's not true. It's a ultra low for a thrower. Now let's take a look at the runtime test. All right, and click. All right, so I'm reading about 13, a little over 1300 lumens. Um, they quote it as 1600 lumens. Uh, again, amateur equipment, take that for what it's worth. But let's see how it does as it comes up here to the 30 second ANSI limit. And we'll go a little further than that and see how far it steps down. So, so far it's decreased about, what, 200 lumens or so. Okay, we've hit the 30 second ANSI. I haven't seen a major step down. That's still dropping pretty fast though. And that's quite fast. So, you know, there you go. Thermal regulation, the light is definitely trying not to cook itself, but you can see here that it's going to drop quickly at around the minute mark. Let me unclick it and click it again and see if that resets the lumens. Okay, so that did. So that's one of those things that's both good and bad. It means that if you need the light to step back up right away, just unclick it and click it, but realize what you're doing. You're turning it into a hot rod and you can blow the engine. All right, let's get a measurement on the Sakonic here. And we're reading it as about 6,500K, a little bit above Delta UV and low CRI. Another thing I should point out about the Claris, which is really cool, is that the driver runs from three volts up to 8.4 volts, which means you can use two cells in series. So what I did as a quick test is I just took the cap off here, pulled out the included 21700. I put a little spacer in here just to stop some rattling. Then I took these button top 18350s 
and I put two of them in there and it does in fact work. Now what's interesting though is let's take a look at the lumen tube. You would think that if you have higher voltage that you'd have even more lumens like you know like on a boss light but the fact of the matter is that it's actually about half the lumens. So what I figure is this light wasn't designed for running dual 18350s. That's just what I'm doing. It was designed for running dual CR123 primary cells. And with CR123s, running at about half the lumen output, about 700, makes a lot of sense because there's just less runtime there and you would go through those batteries so fast. But the ability to use primary cells and not only the rechargeable is great in kind of an emergency situation because you can store those CR123s for decades. All right, what's my conclusion? This Claris XT12 GT Pro is the farthest throwing SFT40 light that I have right now. So if I want something with a little bit less throw but better color and kind of a, like a more defined and actually wider beam, I will go with my Ace Beam L16 V2. However, if I'm going for throw, like I absolutely want to illuminate something at max distance, the Claris puts the Ace Beam to shame and we saw that in the beam shots. Thank you for watching. And please consider subscribing to my channel. The subs really do help me out. And if you comment and like the video, that helps as well. But with that, I'll say thanks for watching one more time and see you in the next review.